Hi everyone. Uh, so today, the, this video in particular, we're going to be talking about a particular distribution. Uh, and that distribution uh, is called the binomial distribution. So in essence, what the binomial distribution is, is we're going to take a coin, right? So we're, we're going to abstract this in a second, but we're going to take a coin and we're going to flip it multiple times. We're going to flip it and flip it and flip it and flip it and flip it. Um, and we're going to try to ask, well, what is the distribution of the number of heads and the number of tails? So this is slightly different um, in the sense that we weren't looking at, we don't care about necessarily the order. We just want to know how many heads came up, how many tails came up. Uh, and we're going to generalize this, right? So we're going to look at a Bernoulli P distribution, not just an arbitrary coin flip. Uh, remember that a Bernoulli P distribution, this is when our, it's like flipping a coin, but our probability might be not exactly one half. It could be one tenth, one twentieth, et cetera. So, so let's, let's look at this. So say I flip a coin four times um, and I get heads, tails, tails, heads. Um, but like I said, I don't really care about the order. Um, so let me highlight this, um, heads, tails, tails, heads, uh, but I don't really care about the order. So all I really care about is that I got two heads and two tails. Um, and so since these are the two things I care about, the order doesn't really matter, but at the same time it does, right? Because this is a different order than tails, heads, heads, tails. And so since um, these two represent two different flips, we want to count how many different ways we can get this, these possibilities. So let's kind of figure out how we can do this. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. So one, one little thing at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to start off by flipping just one coin. So if I flip just one coin, I can either get heads or tails, right? So I either have heads or I have tails. Uh, so there's nothing really interesting. So let's look at a second coin flip. Um, and this is where things get much more interesting. So I flip a coin a second time. Now, either I'm going to get heads or tails a second time. So remember this, we have four different options, right? We have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. So we have four different ways of doing things. But again, what we want is to put together the ones that are the same and separate the ones that are different by the number of heads. So notice how here, there's only one where we have two heads. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have just one with two heads. So I'm going to put an HH there to say two heads. Uh, there's also just one with tails, tails. So we're going to say, maybe I'll keep this in blue. There's only one with tails, tails. So let me make this heads, heads red. So we see the colors. Uh, and then here in the middle, there's two that have one heads and two that have one tails. Uh, in other words, when I look at heads, tails, we're going to have two of them. Um, and these give us our four different possibilities, right? One, two, three, four. So we have four different ways. Uh, and so remember back when we were talking about common student error, this is one way to, s another way to see that there's, where the problems kind of lie. Uh, okay, so now say I flip a third time. Well, if I flip a third time, uh, I'm not gonna show this in um, full detail, like I'm not gonna show the, the three different orders, but what we end up getting is we have heads, heads, heads one time. Uh, now heads, tails, this I can either add a heads, if I add a heads, um, oh, okay, so I can add a heads here, and that'll give me heads, heads, heads. So we have one way of doing this. I can add a tail here, or I can add I can add a tail in this one, or I could add a heads in this one in order to get heads, heads, tails, right? That means I'm gonna have three of these. One from the red, two from the green. Uh, now what I can do, so this one is done. So I'll give a little check mark. This one I'm only missing, I can add a tails here. I can add a heads here, and these are the three ways I can have heads, tails, tails. So notice how two is coming from the green, one is coming from the blue. Uh, and then finally, um, so this one is done, uh, we have one left over where we have tails, tails, tails. Uh, now back in the day, you've probably seen these numbers before. Uh, this is what's called the binomial um, coefficients. Um, and we can design these in what's called Pascal's triangle. 
so this is probably some design you've seen before, right? Uh, I'm going to zoom in and we're going to look at this a little further. Basically, we start off with just one thing, right? So we have nothing. And then I can either flip a heads, right? So I can either flip a heads or I can flip a tails. And that'll give me one, one. Uh, in other words, there's one option for heads here and one option for tails. Uh, then I'm going to flip heads here, tails here, heads here, tails here. I'm going to add something into the set. And here is where we had heads, heads. Here is where we had heads, tails. And here is where we had tails, tails. Now I can. This is kind of what I was doing with the previous thing, where I was grabbing something from each one. Um, so if I label each edge with heads or tails, depending on what I add, then here I can see I'll have one with heads, heads, heads. I grab the one from heads, heads, two from heads, tails, and we get heads, heads tails. Here we have tails, heads, tails. So two tails and one heads. And then finally we have tails, tails, tails. Now this is all nice and good. Um, but we're going to look at this slightly differently. What we're actually going to do um, is so so first off, let me remove this and we're going to look at where um, these numbers directly come from, right? So if you notice kind of what we were doing is when I was looking at coming from one to two, right? When I was adding things, I just added them together. So this is equal to one plus two, one plus two. So the way I got six here is I took three and I took three and here I have three plus three. So I look at the two numbers above and that's how it is uh, created. So for example, if I were to look at where these kind of go, six and four, then I do six plus four, this is gonna be equal to 10. So this is where this is coming from. Um, now, another thing we might wanna do with this triangle uh, is we might actually just wanna add directly our probabilities to it, right? So if you think about it for, for a little bit, um, when we're looking at the different options, so when we were looking at, um, I guess I should have kept the, the head sales. So like, for example, when we were here, this is probably a good place to look at things. Uh, remember how we had the four different options, right? So I have, this means I'll have a one fourth chance of coming here. I have a two fourths chance of coming here and I have a one fourth chance of coming here. These coefficients on top are really coming from these numbers here. Um, and so what we can do is actually just take this and add probabilities um, on top of this. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this and instead of doing one half, so notice how this is one half times one half, one half times one half uh, times two, uh, so this is one half times one half. This is uh, one half times one half times two. This is one half times one half. And where these one halves are really coming from is what I can do is I can set P here and one minus P here. This is just going to be the probability that we flip a heads. And tails, this is going to be the probability that we flip a tails. Um, sorry, one half. So heads, uh, tails, right? So let's try to take this and generalize this without this one half, one half. What happens if I just have an arbitrary probability? So I don't care about whether it's a 50% or a 0%. Let's just look at this arbitrarily. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this P in my one minus P and we're going to replicate this. So what we're going to do is let me kind of erase some of the things that we don't really need and then we'll re-add this in a second. Uh, we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this. We'll take this off. Uh, and we're basically going to label these edges exactly like I did before. But instead of heads, tails, I'm going to label them by the probabilities of getting that certain thing. In other words, the probability of getting heads, the probability of getting tails. Okay, um, 
And what it, this means is at any point when I get to a certain number, so say I get to this certain two, right? So I basically have one P and one, one minus P, right? So here I have P times one minus P, right? So I have P times one minus P, but it doesn't matter which way I go, right? So if I went the other way, one minus P and P, then I get the same thing. So this is why I then multiply by two. This is where this two is coming from. Um, and so this gives us a representation of what lives in this kind of spot here. Um, and so you can kind of see, so this is, so I can kind of see this is P one minus P. This one over here is going to be one minus P squared. And here on the right, we have P squared. If I go one further here off P cubed, I'll have P squared one minus P. I'll have P one minus P squared. And then I'll have one minus P squared uh, for this one. Uh, the last row basically is going to be P to the four, uh, P cubed one minus P, then P squared one minus P squared, P one minus P cubed, and then a one minus p to the four. So basically I know exactly where each of these things um, are coming from. Um, and what this basically is saying is uh, if I flip, for example, two coin flips, I know, and so I flip the coin twice. So I flip the coin twice. So I go one, two, uh, and then I wanna see the number of heads. This is where this is coming from. So this is saying two coin flips and two heads. Uh, if I look at another one, this one, for example, is saying four coin flips, because I went down four times, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna look at three heads because the first P is giving me three, right? So this is kind of how you read this triangle. Now these numbers are coming from what's called the binomial coefficients. So this is probably something you've seen um, in many classes before. And this is really coming from the binomial expansion x plus y to the n. So for example, if I have x plus y to the four, then I have x to the four plus four x cubed y. So here I'm gonna kind of go down so you can kind of see where this looks, what this looks like at the top plus six x squared y squared plus four x y cubed plus um, y to the four, right? Um, and so you see very clearly that these numbers, these coefficients are coming from this triangle as well. Um, and this P is basically our x. So P, uh, yeah, you can see this P is equal to x. Um, and one minus P, one minus P is equal to y. And this is how we're getting these different numbers. Now we can keep extending this um, all the way down. Um, and in essence, what it what happens, <clears throat> what we end up getting is these numbers here, they're called the binomial coefficients, but they're, they, they can be gotten from what's called the choice function. So these numbers are called the choice function, right? So they're given by the choice function. Um, and basically what we do is, like I, like I kind of did with our example, is we look at, ah, I can't hit the right thing. No, why do I, there we go. I want the yellow one. When we want to look at the nth row and the kth number. So for example, the, the fourth coin flip and the third head, right? Uh, so this is our n and this is our k, then this is given to us by the choice function. So this we already saw before, it's n choose k is equal to n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, k factorial. So in other words, um, if I flip my coin n times and k of them turn out to be heads, the probability that this occurs um, is given by n choose k right? So this is our number. And then we have to multiply by these little, the P and the one minus P stuff, right? So we have to multiply by the X's and Y's. So here we have P to the K, because we do K 
head flips, and then we get tails n minus k times. Uh, and this is basically the binomial distribution. Um, so this is known as the binomial distribution. That's it. Uh, it's a little complicated and it took uh, a long time to get to. Um, but yeah, so in, to be a little more precise so that we, we get this really down. Um, and in the next video, we'll look at some examples. So don't worry too much where's the examples. We'll look at that in the next one because this video is already significantly too long. Um, is when we have n trials of pro with probably p of success, then the binomial probability formula, this is given by uh, p of k successes in n trials is equal to n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p, n minus k. So here, really, you can think of this as k heads. Uh, let me do this in a different color. k heads in n coin flips. So if that kind of helps you think about this, this is really what we're doing. Um, and for some fixed n and p, then these binomials probabilities actually give us what's called the binomial distribution. So this is technically um, where this distribution name is coming from. Uh, notice that we do have zero in our distribution, right? So we do have a zero here. Um, and this is why we always let zero factorial be equal to one, or else we couldn't make this uh, function properly. Uh, that would be kind of it. So we'll stop here. This video is way too long already. Um, and we'll look at some examples in the next uh, video. So thank you.